Lindsay L. Marty, thank you so much for letting me be involved in your channel and letting me be able to teach a few lessons. I'm so excited I get to hang with you guys today. Today I would like to talk about my top tips and the essentials of playing live music. Today we're going to go over signal flow in a pedal board, my favorite pedals to use live, we're going to talk a little bit about noise gates, and my favorite tips and techniques to playing live as well as a few tips of chord inversions and how I get into my favorite solo positionings. Let's talk about standard signal flow. When you're setting up a pedal board, there is really no right or wrong with anything I'm going to say today. It's a lot of what makes you feel the best, but there are some good general tips to get you started in the right direction. When you're putting together a pedal board, there's a general flow of how things can sound better. You can ultimately do whatever you want though. Typically, when you're setting up a pedal board, you want to start with your tuner. You want your tuner closest to your guitar signal so that it can have the most unobstructed sound hitting that tuner. Then right after your tuner, you're usually going to want your compressors, again, so it can have the cleanest sound coming from your guitar. Then a volume pedal, if you use a volume pedal. Then your wahs follow after that. I always normally have my volume pedal and wah pedal right next to each other. They're also so big, so it also saves a lot of space on your board if you put them right next to each other. Then after a wah pedal, is normally an overdrive section. I normally at least have two overdrives. Sometimes if I get a little aggressive, I have three on my board. Then we get into your modulation section. Typically after drives, you have your chorus pedals, your tremolo pedals, your delays, and then your reverbs. Now sometimes you can buy pedals that have a few of those modulations in the same box, which is totally fine. But generally to have your, your reverb take your whole tone and add reverb to that whole tone, you want your reverbs to be very last, as well as your delays. But that's typically what you want to use as your signal chain. Now, I change my pedal board up all the time. I sometimes change my pedal board up every single show. I normally add loopers. If you do add a looper, you're gonna want it at the end of your chain as well. Noise gates, we'll get into talking about noise gates in a little bit. Noise gates generally you want at the end of your signal. Let's talk about some of my favorite pedals to use live. This is a Crybaby. It's a classic wah pedal. Of course, I wrote wah this way on my wah pedal. I've been using this wah for years. It's always so good. One of my favorite overdrive pedals is the Klon Centaur, and a lot of us can afford to buy a Klon Centaur because they are over two grand. There are a lot of Klon clones out there in the market. So this is called the KTR. Um, it's made by Bill Finnegan himself, who makes the Klon Centaur. It's not exactly like the Klon Centaur. It is pretty, pretty close. I also love this pink pedal that's on my board. It is made by Seriatone. So this one's called a Centura Professional Overdrive, I think. As an overdrive pedal, it like hugs your tone. It's like, it's like this big warm blanket. It is so adaptable to your playing. It's probably one of my favorite overdrives as well. Um, in terms of delay pedals, I love the Strymon Timeline. There's so many settings in this thing. I use this a lot in the studio. And for playing live, you know, it has three programmable switches. The abilities that this pedal has in one box is insane. To the other side of the spectrum, the Boss DD7 Digital Delay is awesome. I use this pedal, as you can see, it's on my board. You can get an extension of a tap tempo. It's exactly what you need in a delay pedal. It's super simple. All of the knobs are right there. You can dial it in super fast. And that's why I have it on my Throne Go board. And then the last one I'll talk about is the DL4. I've had this pedal forever. Again, it has programmable delays. You can have three different delays, a tap tempo, and it also has a loop pedal built inside and a really, really great loop pedal. I use this pedal for years on my touring board. And now I use it a lot in the studio, but this is a really, really great pedal. And it's been on the market forever. So those are probably a handful of my favorite pedals. Let's talk a little bit about noise gates. I generally like to say, if you can find a way to reduce the noise in your setup as is, whether that's finding different pickups, choosing a different guitar, finding better power, cleaning up your board, then do so. But if you are somehow experiencing a lot of noise in your setup and you can't figure out what's wrong, then bring in a noise gate. Noise gates can be very good for reducing noise, hence the 
title noise gate just as like a compressor takes all of those loud notes and compresses it down to one even tone a noise gate's going to do the same thing but going to take any noise that is below a certain threshold that you set and take out that noise now these these are noise canceling pickups but let's say we had like like a little bit of a noise you would be able to dial in the threshold to to be just over the noise that you're experiencing and that threshold is going to mark the noise that you're going to basically cancel out and then anything over that noise which you're going to play which everything you would play would be louder would be over that line the noise gate would let through on this um, noise gate it's labeled as decay but it can also be labeled as the attack it basically is the speed at what the noise gate will attack the note and so Generally, you want the decay or you want the attack to be pretty quick because if it's a noise gate, you want it to hit it so that it'll let your note through. All right, this guitar isn't actually that noisy. I try to set up my guitar so that they're not that noisy, but let me show you a guitar that is very noisy and can help us demonstrate this noise gate. I brought one of the loudest guitars I own with a P90 pickup in it. I've turned all of my overdrive paddles up. So basically, you can hear some good noise. So clearly, if this noise was coming through your pedal board channel, it is not essential to playing live. And this is not the kind of noise you'd want just when you're quiet, in between songs, in between sections of a song. So this is where a noise gate could be super helpful. So let's hear the noise without a noise gate, and then let's hear a noise with the noise gate and see how much the noise gate helps. So this is without. It is very noisy. And this is with a noise gate. Isn't that amazing? Now listen to me turn, this is with the threshold all the way up so you could really see how the noise gate works. But let me turn the threshold down so you can see it. Let's get our noise again. There we go, there's our noise. Um, now watch as I turn the threshold knob, knob up. As I turn the threshold knob up, you'll listen to the noise disappear. So there's still a little bit of that noise, but there is nothing close to this. So this is with your noise gate on and you can still play. And there's no noise in between. So this is your typical noise. And then this is with your noise gate. So I want to talk about one of my favorite chord voicings that helps me get into the right solo positionings, um, specifically the minor pentatonic scale of whatever key I'm playing in when I'm playing live. Whenever I need to play a minor chord, instead of playing, well, let's choose B minor. Instead of playing this B minor, I always play this position up here. So we're on our seventh fret. I don't know why, I just, I love this inversion. It opens my hands up to grab this note, grab this note, to, to even just play it with my thumb. And then, and then all of like my minor pentatonic is right in front of it. So this is my uh, this is my guilty pleasure as far as a minor epicenter of how I I play a lot of my minor chords when I'm playing live. It's movable. It's transitions between chords. So this is probably my one of my secret chord positions. You always talk about sort of your your comfort zone as a, as a guitar player. Whenever I have to start a solo, when I'm soloing in something that I've never heard before, I always come back to my minor pentatonic, my first position. That scale will always be home base for me. And from there, I go into different modes, I can go into different keys, I can play major over minor pentatonics, I can do a lot of different things, but it all stems from one scale. And from that one scale, I have licks like or 
that I use so often in my playing, but they're all from this one, which is actually very close to your B minor chord and my little secret B minor chord. And they're all from the same spot. So if somebody's throwing me into a song that I've never heard before, and I'm like, okay, what key are we in? I find that tonic, I find that position, I can find this, this scale, and I'm good to go. And lastly, I would like to talk about my favorite playing techniques. Playing live is so different than practicing. Because practicing, you're sitting in your house, you know, you usually have your foot set on something, you're like comfy and you're playing for hours. You play live and you put on a strap and your guitar is usually at a different height and you, you're like, this feels so foreign, why does this feel so foreign? And you play completely different. I'd like to say a few techniques I have when you're playing live. You wanna stand up straight as a general rule, wanna adjust your strap so it's similar to when you're sitting down because that's gonna be the most comfortable. And then as you get playing live more, you'll figure out the right strap height and you can adjust it up or down. You want to make sure your shoulders are down. We get so much tension as guitar players going like this or going like this, like hunching over our guitars. So you just want to try to keep your shoulders down. And the most important thing is your hand position. I generally say you'd like to have your thumb rest on the back of the neck. And if you have your thumb resting on the back of your neck, it's going to allow your wrist to be able to comfortably come around and be able to do whatever you're gonna do when you're playing. And that's when you're standing too, you know, you don't want to have your guitar so low so that your wrist can't really reach around. So again, having your strap at that around sitting position will help you put your thumb comfortably on the back of the neck, able for you to reach around and play. So guys, those are my essentials of playing live from signal flow to some of my favorite tricks and tips of the best techniques for playing live. Thank you for hanging out with me. Make sure to subscribe and follow Marty Music as well as check out my channel below. All the links are below this video. See you next time.